comes Bulldog Drummond. The music fades. Your local announcer's voice superimposes itself over the theme music, just as my voice did when I started speaking. Your opening announcement would sound like this. Tonight, the Blank Company presents another of the exciting adventures in the life of Bulldog Drummond, amateur detective. Soldier of Fortune, Champion of Lost Causes, the most celebrated adventure detective of fiction and the screen, who now comes to his loyal friends through radio with more of his baffling and intriguing mysteries. We invite you to follow in the footsteps of Bulldog Drummond. We invite you, too, to try blank. At this point, your announcer will describe your product, store, or service, followed by 40 words of selling copy. Now to tell you about tonight's adventure, here is Bulldog Drummer. Come with me to one of the great highways which spread like ribbons across the broad expanse of the United States. It is late at night and a driving storm beats down on the countryside. Coming up toward the crest of a steep hill, a huge express truck laden with goods slowly climbs. In the driver's cab, two men peer intently into the night. Hey, Bill. You hear it? What time is it? Uh, 3.30. Say, did you see that? Yeah. Well, the truck behind is signaling with their lights. I wonder if it's anyone we know. I'll give them my signal. Two long flashes and one short one. Here comes their reply. Long, two shorts, and the long. It's funny. I never got that signal on the road before. I guess it must be some new outfit. Yeah. Boy, I'm sure glad we ain't alone on this road. What do you mean? The Richards mob. <laughs> you ain't worried about them, are you? Well, they got away with six hijackings in the last two weeks. Two of them were on this road. Yeah, but they wouldn't pull another job so quickly. They're not so dumb. They know the cops are looking for them. Yeah, well, I hope you're right. Hey, that truck's coming close. Only it ain't a truck, Red. I can see it clearly now. It's a car. Yeah, here they come. Okay, you in the cab. Pull over and stop. Say, Rick, they got guns and rifles. Yeah, four men in that car. Better do as they say, Bill. Come on, stop or we'll let you have it. I mean business, Bill. Business or not, I ain't stopping. They're firing at us. You better duck. Hey, the road's wet. Be careful of skidding. I know what I'm doing. I hope so. Are you going to pull over? This is your last chance. Bill, you better stop. No, I can manage her. Now you did it with skidding. Hold tight. I'll bring her out of it. Just take it. Bill, you're heading for the bank. Get her in the center of the road. I can't. She's out of control. Watch it, Red. We're going to crash. Red. Red, you okay? Yeah. You were crazy to try a thing like that. I wanted to get away from her. Not a lot of good at it, did you? Here they come. All right, get out of that cab, all of you. Guess the jig's up, Bill. Not yet, it ain't. There'll be other trucks along this road and cars, too. I'm going to stall them. Come on out, or we'll drag you out. Come on, Red. You must be Richard. Never mind who I am. Okay, boys, you two cover him. I'll take over the truck. Oh, no, you don't. Hey, you look like the kind that's going around looking for trouble. Yeah, you got me right, buddy. Uh, he dropped uh, his gun. Grab it, Red. Grab it. Why didn't you help me? Dr. Wilson wanted in Ward 8. Calling Dr. Wilson. Dr. 
Captain Drummond. Danny? Oh, I got your message, Captain Drummond, and here I am. But would you mind telling me what this is all about? Well, Denny, I've asked you to meet me at this hospital because we've got one of the most important commissions we've ever been assigned to since we landed in the United States. Oh, I say, what's up? It seems there's a gang of hijackers stealing truckloads of goods consigned for shipment to England. Hijackers? Yes, Denny, it's an American word for a sort of road pirate. Oh, I understand. Or well, when did you receive this commission? Well, we must work as quickly as possible. You know how badly they need those American goods back home. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, just how do these modern descendants of Captain Kidd operate? Instead of ships, they use automobiles, Denny. Instead of cutlasses, they use sawed-off shotguns and submachine guns. Otherwise, the methods are exactly the same. Terrorize or even kill the drivers and make off with their trucks. They're a particularly nasty lot, Denny. As I can well imagine, Captain. One of their Tom. victims, a man named Cassidy, is in that room. He was courageous enough to resist them. They beat him, shot him. If a doctor will permit it, we'll have a chat with him. Ah, there's Dr. Wilson now. You may come in, Captain Drummond. Come, Denny. Fred. I don't think you'll be able to have much of a talk with him, Captain Drummond. He's Fred. been delirious for the last Fred. two days. Fred. Huh? Talks coherently for only short Fred. periods. I understand, Doctor. Help me, Red. Red, why don't you help me? Grab his gun, Red. Help me, Red. Cassidy. Red. Fred. Cassidy. Uh, who... Who are you? I'm Captain Hugh Drummond. I'm investigating the hijacking. Hijacking? Oh, yeah, the fight. Did they get the truck? Did they get my load? Huh? Yes, Cassidy, yes. Now, look, do you feel well enough to answer some questions? Yeah, yeah I guess so. Good. Now, can you tell me exactly what happened when you were held up three days ago? Yeah, well, Brett and me crashed into the embankment. Then they came up in their car. How many men did they have in the car? Four, I think. Did you recognize any of the men who attacked you? No. I guess I was kind of crazy of me to wail into them like I did, but it was dark, and I figured they wouldn't be able to shoot straight anyway. I, I thought I could stall them till another car came along the road, but I guess it didn't work. You know, Red didn't help me much. Oh? In fact, he... He just stood there. Say, Captain Drummond. Yes? Now I come to think of it, the way them lights were signaled. Yes. A, a, a long, in two shorts, and then a long. And then the way red... Oh, my head. Yes, Cassidy, go on with what you were saying. Yeah. And light signals. Red. Yes, Cassidy. What about red? Red, why don't you help me? Grab his gun, Red. Give me a hand here, will you? They're coming at me. Don't let him, Red. Oh, Dr. Red. Wilson. Dr. Wilson. I'm afraid Red. this will be all for the present, Captain Red. Drummond. Yes, I understand, Doctor. Why don't you... Denny. Help me, coming, yes. Why don't you help me, I say, Captain Drummond, who's this Red person he's talking about? Oh, Red Nelson, the driver who was with him when the truck was held up. And strangely enough, he wasn't injured in the fight at all. Oh, that's curious. Well, have you questioned this Nelson person yet? Yes, yeah, I had a little talk with him before coming here. He's scheduled to take a cargo of goods worth $30,000 to New York tonight. Hmm. He doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to be on that truck with him, Denny. <laughs> Hey, Michaels. Come on, I'm ready to leave. Hey, Michael, what's keeping you? Well, it's about... Oh, Captain Drummond. Yes, hello, Nelson. What are you doing here? I've decided to take Michael's place. Why? You're carrying a valuable cargo, you know. You haven't any objection to my coming along, have you? Well, it's hard work. I need someone to relieve me. Oh, that's all right, I can drive. Can you? Oh, I've handled trucks like this before. Well, what do you say? Ready to leave? Okay, Drummond. Well, Nelson, when do you want me to take over? 
I'll tell you when, Drummond. Oh, you've been at the wheel for five hours now. I think you're rather tired. No, I ain't tired. Say, what's that? What? Those lights in your mirror. Signals. Signal from whom? Another well, truck in back of us. You can see it in the mirror. I can see a pair of lights. Well, it looks more like a car from here. Oh, no, cars don't signal like that. It's another truck. Look, they're, they're flashing their lights again. Yeah. Well, what does that signal mean? He's asking if everything's okay. Right. Are you going to reply? Yeah. I'm going to tell him everything's fine. Like this. Two long flashes and a short one. Interesting. I suppose they'll respond. Sure. Here it comes. Long one, two short ones. What does that mean? It means this. What, a, a pistol? Yeah, get him up, Drummond. Come on, get him up. All right, Nelson. What are you going to do? You're not going to leave this cab alive, Drummond. I'm afraid you won't either. What do you mean? Look, your truck's going off the road. Where? Hey, wait, let go of my hand. Oh, drop oh. that gun. Drop that gun. Oh, you ain't going to... Drop it, I tell you. No. Okay, oh, get away with you. it, you... Yeah. Fight to the finish in a truck running wild down the highway. Can Drummond save the precious cargo? What is the secret of the blinking highlights? In just a few moments, we'll know the answer to this secret. The music fades, and at this point in the program each week, your local announcer presents a minute and a half of your selling copy. However, as is customary on the premier performance of network shows... Let's listen to the following suggested personal message to be read on the opening program by your local announcer or a chief executive of your company. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is a great one in the career of the blank company. For tonight, we present for the first time the most celebrated adventure detective of fiction and the screen, Bulldog Drummond, who will now be brought to you, our good friends and his loyal friends, through radio. We have developed this program for your entertainment, to make your Sundays more pleasant, and to circle a weekly date on your calendar to get together with the Blank Company. The adventures of Bulldog Drummond come to you directly from the stage of the Mutual Playhouse, just off Times Square in New York City, where every Sunday, for your entertainment, we will assemble a sparkling cast of dramatic stars from radio, Hollywood, and the theater to bring you the very best the most brilliant in mystery adventure stories, just as we of the Blank Company always bring you the best in blank products. Be sure to tune in every Sunday when Bulldog Drummond will thrill you again with another complete, pulse-pounding story in his career of breathtaking adventure. Such is the program that we have arranged especially for you, and we of the Blank Company sincerely hope that Bulldog Drummond brings you as much pleasure each week as it gives us in presenting him to you. And now, on with the show. We left Drummond struggling with Red Nelson in the cab of the huge trailer truck which is swinging crazily down the highway as the two men grapple. Drummond is relentlessly twisting Nelson's gun hand. Drop that gun. Uh, you ain't gonna get away from me. Right. Oh. Uh, uh, how to stop this truck. Uh, oh, there we are. Oh. All right, Nelson, step out of it. Come uh, on, come uh, on. Uh, Get your pistol now, so you better not try anything. What are you gonna do with me? You better talk fast, Nelson. If you're smart and tell me what I want to know, it'll take years off your sentence. What do you want to know? Those light signals we saw. They came from Richard's car, didn't they? Yeah. Did he plan to hijack this truck? Yeah. What was the signal you gave him? Was it the signal to stay away? You ain't got a thing on me, Captain Drummond. You ain't going to get any information out of me. I don't understand it, Captain Drummond. Oh, what, Denny? Why that Nelson person is so foolish as to withhold the information? Oh, it's quite simple. He thinks Richards will help him. 
soon as we got back here, he saw a lawyer. We haven't been able to get a word out of him since. Uh, it's rather discouraging, isn't it, Captain Drummond? Yes, yes, rather. I thought Nelson's capture would give us an important lead, but it's just another blind alley. We're back just where we started from, and it is... <laughs> oh, what are you laughing at, Captain Drummond? <laughs> Danny, <laughs> Danny, have you seen the seat of your trousers? The seat of my trousers? <laughs> you, you must have sat in some paint. <laughs> oh, dear me, so I have. <laughs> Looks quite ghastly, doesn't it? Well, uh, that rich yellow doesn't exactly harmonize with your blue suit. Oh, but I must rush home and change. No, 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 don't. Oh, but Captain Drummond, it's most embarrassing. Embarrassing? Why, Denny, those trousers have just given me a plan that will lead to the capture of the Richards mob. Have they? Oh, I don't see how a pair of trousers can capture a gang of hijackers. Oh, you will, Denny, you will. Well, do you mind telling me what your plan is, Captain Drummond? Of course not. In every one of these hijackings, the truck was taken from the drivers on the highway. Yes, that seems to be the general method. Yes. Two days later, the truck would be found empty, miles away from the spot where it was held up. The hijackers had unloaded the goods, and unless I'm greatly mistaken, stored them somewhere. Oh, can you be sure of that? Well, not absolutely sure. You see, the police in New York and Chicago have received very little of the stolen property. These hijackers are clever. They know that it's rather easy for the police to trace large quantities of stolen property. Oh, yes, I see. And so they're selling only small amounts of it. In that way, they protect themselves. Very clever. Yes, but here's the rub. They must have some place where they can unload and store the stuff. And that's the place we're going to find. But how? With a clever paint trail, which we'll find in the crime laboratory here at police headquarters. Come on, Denny. We have a lot of work to do. Denny, try this new mixture. Very well, Captain Drummond. Paint, paint, paint. Upon my word, Captain Drummond, I'm fairly sick of the smell of the stuff. Ah, now, now, Denny. We're getting close to the mixture we need. Don't lose patience now. Captain Drummond. Yes? Do you realize that we've spent the entire night in this laboratory? Have we? Uh, Wait, Denny. Come here. What is it? Look, this mixture. 104. When did you set it out to dry? Oh, I look at the top. 104. Here it is. It was set out at 5.10 a.m. 5.10. And what was its original color? Dark blue. Well, look, Denny, it's turned a cream color. Yes. I think this is the mixture we need. What time is it now? 5.40. Are you sure it didn't change color before this? Oh, I'm positive. Here's the chart, Captain Drummond. Mixture 104, dark blue paint, set to dry at 5.10 a.m. 5.15 a.m., same color. 5.30, still blue. 5.35, starting to turn to cream color. This is what we need to really track down the stolen trucks. Turn on the lights, Denny. I want to make one more test. Right, oh. Where's that spotlight? Ah, here it is. Now, Denny, you watch while I turn on the spotlight. There we are. See, Denny? We can see that mixture 104 without any trouble. That cream shade looks white under the spotlight. Yes. All right, Denny. Today is the 21st. I'm going to call the Trans State Transport Company and tell them to spread the word that a valuable truckload of goods will be sent to New York on the night of the 23rd. And, Denny, I think that date will mark the end of the Richards outfit. Look, Jerry, I think that's the trans-state truck coming up the hill now. Yeah. You better get set. I want you to swing out into the road as soon as it passes us. Okay. You fellas ready back there? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, we're in luck. I can't see another pair of lights on this road, and we can see for miles from the top of this hill. Yeah. Say, boss. Yeah? Are you sure this load is worth the risk? Sure? Hey, listen, I got a gilded tip that the load coming through tonight is worth close to a hundred grand. Yeah, but what I'm worried about is that it might be a trap. Say, what's eating you? Getting cold feet? No, no, but you know what happened to Red Nelson. Without him slipping us the dope from the inside, we might be taking a big chance. Hey, listen. I checked this road for 20 miles in both directions. There ain't a trace of a cop around here. Stop your worrying, Jerry. This looks like it'll be the easiest load we ever grabbed. Well, I hope you're right. Here it comes, Jerry. Yep, this is our baby. It's the trans state, all right. 
All right, Jerry, turn on the lights and get started. Jerry, pull over close to the cab. All right. You fellas in the back, get ready to those Tommy guns. Okay, Jerry, blast your horn. All right. Hey, you're in the truck. Pull over. Stop or we'll let you have it. Come on, pull over. Yeah, that did it, Richards. Hey, stop and pull up in front of them. All right. Come on, man. Hey, you two, get out of that cab. That's right, now make it quick. Come on. Keep your hands up. Okay. We're getting out. Come on, Danny. All right. Now, we won't shoot you if you don't give us any trouble. Jerry, you get in the truck. All right. I'll follow you in the stick-up car. Okay. Well, there they go, Denny. Yes, it worked like a charm, Captain Drummond. I don't think they were in the least suspicious. I hope not. And the way you said okay, sir, it sounded so authentically American. (laughs) Denny, look at the road here. Our paint mixture, 104. Yes. It's dark blue. And the trailing gangster car with Richard in it will never spot it. But in 30 minutes, it'll turn cream-colored. And we'll be able to follow that truck to wherever they're taking it. I wonder what they'd do if they knew they were leaving a trail behind them leading straight to their hideout. Well, Denny, in half an hour, Sergeant Johnson of the state police will be along. And we'll be able to follow that trail. Sergeant Johnson, I think we're reaching the end of the trail. Better slow down. All right, sir. Look, Denny. The line of paint goes right up to the entrance of that warehouse. Yes. Stop here, Sergeant, please. Now, look, Sergeant. You'd better turn out the lights on this car and radio headquarters the location of this warehouse and tell them to send some men at once. All right, Captain Drummond. Come on, Denny. What are you going to do, Captain Drummond? Have a look at that warehouse. It seems to be dark and deserted. They probably have blinds over the windows. Look, Denny. You can see how the white line made by our paint mixture goes right through that garage entrance. Yes, it does. Look, there's a door over there. Quiet now as we approach. Right, Earl. It's open, Denny. Better get your pistol ready. There may be trouble. Right. Well, come along, come along. Look, sir. Huh? There's a light up there near the back. Yes, yes. Look, there's the truck we were in tonight. Yes, but where are the men? There doesn't seem to be a soul about. Yes, yes. That's curious. Get near the door. Somebody close the door. Come on back, quick. That's locked. It's locked. I'm afraid, Captain Drummond, we've walked into a trap. Yes, they must have seen us come in and slipped out through another entrance. Well, Captain Drummond, if we didn't succeed in getting the pirates, at least we succeeded in getting their booty. Eh? Huh? Look at this place. Why, there are hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of stolen goods here. Mm. Denny, yes? Do you smell smoke? Smoke? Yes, Captain Drummond. Well, look look there in the back. A fire. Yes, Denny, those bounders are far cleverer than I gave them credit for. They knew that the game was up, and they set this place on fire to destroy the evidence before they fled. Captain Drummond, what was that? Denny... Look over there. Crate upon crate of chemicals. This place will be a roaring furnace in five minutes. We've got to get out of here. Try the door over there, Denny. Right, sir. <coughs> I say this door's locked. Try the window, Captain Drummond. <coughs> Any of these windows are barred, too. We can't get out through them. There goes another crate of chemicals. Captain Drummond, this fire's spreading as fast as lightning. All these doors seem to be locked. What are we going to do? <coughs> Back to the smashing climax of our mystery in just a moment. But first, a message from our sponsor. Again, your local announcer presents another minute and a half sales message. At this time, we ask you to try and visualize what the adventures of Bulldog Drummond means to you. Here are the facts. In the past, as a local or regional advertiser operating on a limited budget, you could not hope to compete with the big network radio programs for a listening audience. Talent costs alone making this impossible. 
Today, however, as a participant in our cooperative group, you pay only your prorated share of the total talent cost. This is possible because Bulldog Drummond is a nationally syndicated cooperative network radio program, which is simultaneously fed by direct wire from the Mutual Playhouse just off Times Square in New York City to the 175 affiliated stations of the Mutual Broadcasting System from coast to coast. This fall, starting Sunday, September 28th, you can exclusively sponsor an audience-tested radio program in your city which has proven itself the equal of the brilliant network shows sponsored by the world's largest advertisers. Bulldog Drummond is not a phonograph record, but a live show presenting top-name dramatic artists in person at a good Sunday hour when most people listen, and at a program cost prorated to the potentialities of your trading area. And remember that Bulldog Drummond's fiction fans and movie fans are pre-sold Drummond Radio fans. Now back to Bulldog Drummond. We left Drummond and Denny trapped in the blazing warehouse, surrounded by exploding chemical crates, choking from the dense fumes and facing an almost certain death. Licking tongues of flame bar all exits. Desperately, Denny cries... There goes another crate of chemicals. Captain Drummond, this fire's spreading as fast as lightning. Mm-hmm. The doors are locked. The window's barred. What are we going to do? Denny, Denny... Look, there's a truck. Into the cab. Hurry. <coughs> right oh. oh. Well, in luck, Denny. Look, they left the keys in. What are you going to do, Captain Robin? Use the truck as a battering ram and smash through those garage doors. Hold on, Denny. Here we go. Denny. Denny. Are you all right? All right, Captain Drummond, Craig. Come on, come on, let's get out of here. I do. Uh... Captain Drummond, are you all right? Yes, I didn't know. Yes. I, I, I saw them speed by in two automobiles a few minutes after you and Denny went into the warehouse. Oh, did you radio in a description of their cars? Yes. I also radioed in a report about the fire. The fire engines are coming up now. Good, good, good work. I want to get to that radio and tell headquarters to block all roads in the radius of 50 miles of this place. Come on, Denny. Blockade all roads in 50-mile radius of old Simmons Warehouse. Richard's mob believed in vicinity. Calling all cars. Calling car 29. Barricade road south of Hollis Head. Calling car 38. Barricade road south of Robbins Turnpike. State Police Headquarters. Special orders to Police Chief of Martinsville. Barricade all roads west of your town. Richard's mob believed in vicinity. Description of cars near you. Sergeant, are you sure that this is the road they took? Yes, Captain Drummond. They had quite a start on us, Captain Drummond. Yes, I know, I know. Calling all cars, Richards and his mob spotted at Glenville. Police fired at their cars and knocked out one of their headlights. They turned around, went south on Route 14. Route 14? That's the road we're on now. Sergeant Johnson, how far is it to Glenville? Only three or four miles from here, Captain Drummond. Then we may meet them coming toward us, unless they've taken a side road. I say, Captain Drummond, look up there. Two cars just came over the crest of that hill. One of them has a headlight out. Yes, but we can't be sure it's Richard's. I say, they seem to be signaling to each other with their headlights. Look, a long flash, two short ones, and another long one. Ah, that's Richard's, all right. It's that all-clear signal. Dalton, swing your car around and block the road. Okay, Captain. Hurry, we won't be able to make it if you don't. Come on, Denny. Dalton, out of this car quickly now. Come over here to the side of the road. Here they come. Yes, they'll have to stop now. Get your pistols ready, men. We'll close in when they stop. We'll be able to hold them until help arrives. Captain Drummond, I don't think they're going to stop. They're trying to bring down the sign. Captain Drummond. Yes, Denny. I say, did you see this account of the capture of the Richards gang and the blade? Uh, no, no, Denny. Well, there's a very good photograph of you in it. Hmm? Yeah. 
The one they have of me is simply horrid. Oh, well. Jenny, I think you'd better say goodbye, or rather au revoir, to our American friends. Oh, what do you mean? Well, we're leaving on the clipper for England. I received a cable only an hour ago. I'm afraid we won't be able to come back here until the fall. Oh, dear me, I... It will be difficult to say farewell. I... I've made so many good friends here. Uh, and so have I. But there's a great deal of work to be done in England, and we are needed. Again, the music fades. Again, your local announcer presents a half-minute sales message. We suggest you have your selling copy at this point feature specials, traffic items, price merchandise, or special promotions. Strong, do-it-today copy with plenty of sell. <laughs> 